Micah! Y yeah. He's... What is it... he? What? What? He's like smaller than average. Is it... I think he's a... I think he's a midget. Oh, dude. That's odd job. Oh, odd job is cheating. Ladies, gentlemen, my often forgotten, but most certainly not by me, M14s. Welcome to the channel. Today we're going to be talking about a very interesting rifle, and that is the Mark 14 Mod Zero. Of any rifle I have ever used, this is pr probably, Micah, the most iconic. The vibiest? The vibiest. If you played Call of Duty Modern Warfare, and I know you did, but try not to pretend that you didn't then you fell in love with this rifle because of that game. If you don't think of that gun and all gillied up comes in your head, you Just probably didn't have a very good childhood, I'm not gonna lie. Miss me with that, yeah. honestly miss me with that. Generational gap be damned, we all played that mission. In any case, today we talk about the real deal, Mark 14 Mod Zero, a lot of very interesting things came about because of this rifle and how it came into being. So, hope you'll join us today on Grand Thumb, Mark 14 Mod Zero. But before we get into that, we of course have to thank the biggest sponsor of our channel. The biggest sponsor of the channel is the Sonoran Desert Institute. Don't say it, the Sonoran Desert Institute. A big thank you to them if you're looking to get your start in gunsmithing. They are the people to go to and you cannot thank them enough. Big thank you to the Sonoran Desert Institute. And of course, we also have to thank who, Micah? Uh, primary arms for the uh, world's best optics, at least one of the cooler ones. I don't know what you'd call it. <laughs> that compact one day it is super sick, actually. A big thank you to Primary Arms for sponsoring us. We love them very much and they are very awesome. And of course, Norm Ammunition for supplying all the ammunition for this review. But with all of that being said, let's get into it. Getting into it, we have to describe precisely what this is. This is a Mark 14 Mod Zero EVR that was built up by Fulton Armory. So Fulton Armory, as well as many others, do make great EVR clones. Um, Fulton, Smith Enterprises, LRB all make really good M14 replicas. The M1A from Springfield, uh, jury's still out on that one. We'll say jury's still out. We're, we're still kind of reviewing that guy. But if you're looking for like a really good M14 clone, I would recommend those three. Uh, we don't have any relationship with Fulton Armory. This rifle was simply purchased by me, has around 4,000 rounds on it with a barrel change um, because we just burned this guy down. And uh, yeah, and a very interesting system. Of course, the Sage was also purchased by us. Uh, there was no exchange of money or anything like that and animation is provided for by Norma. So that is a, our full disclosure. Let's get into it. If you're not sure of what you're looking at, um, I don't blame you because although this is an M14 at its heart, it looks so radically different from an M14 that it confuses a lot of people. So let's talk about what it is. So we have an M14 that is dressed up with the Sage International uh, chassis. So that adds a lot of functionality to the system, obviously adds a telescoping stock, pistol grip, all that stuff that is very scary to a lot of different politicians. But the question is, how exactly did it come about? Because if you know anything about the M14, the M14 is one of the shortest lived service rifles to have ever been fielded by the United States military. In fact, the shortest main service rifle. And yet, it has continued to endure for a long time despite not serving as the main battle rifle. So what happened? Good question. To understand the enhanced battle rifle, what we have to understand is the penny-pinching nature of the United States government. Now to be clear, 
There are two separate very great fairy tale stories when it comes to the EBR. We have the tale of the Mark 14 Mod Zero, which is what we have right here, and that was at the request of the United States Navy SEALs. And then, of course, we have the Mark 14 EBR RI, which was uh, done by the United States Army, and that was more a maybe a we don't know if we're doing the right thing, but we're going to do it anyhow. Talk to any infantryman about it. They'll be very angry when you talk to them about the EBR. In any case, we're going to start off and we're going to talk about the Mark 14 Mod Zero, which is in my mind the more vibey of the two. So the Mark 14 Mod Zero came about because the United States Navy SEALs basically wanted to fuck even harder. And they wanted a smaller M14 system because they really liked it, or at least a lot of the guys back then. Talked to a lot of the more modern SEALs, they weren't a huge fan of the EBR, and again, I do have to thank the NavSpec War community for uh, taking the time to talk with me, talked to a lot of great individuals who served with this weapon. Um, that was a really cool opportunity on my side. I'm always humbled. But in any case, what came about in 2004 was the Mark 14 Mod Zero. There was, of course, a Mod 1 later. You have to understand that later on, that the Army was facing a pretty big problem. If you know anything about the Army, the Army loves this idea of overmatch. Micah, do you know what overmatch is? Overmatch. It would be like... Uh, Definition right here. Let's see how close he gets it. who only have spring airsoft guns in the cul-de-sac, but you're the parents who bought you the first full metal electric gun, and it held like 500 BBs, and you just shot everyone, and nobody wanted to play with you. That's actually a really good definition of overmatch. So the Army loves to be able to completely outclass the enemy. And what was happening is the opposite was happening. Our soldiers with M4s were getting consistently um, out matched in terms of range with their M4s for say PKM or whatever. And so they wanted something that it could of course deliver more firepower at the squad level. Enter the M14. Due to the fact that we adopted so many and made so many back in the day, there are a ton of M14s in storage. So comes in big brain moment. What if we took the M14 and we made it super duper modern instead of just throwing an optic on it? And so was born the EBR RI program, which was of course run by Rock Island Arsenal, not auction. Eat your heart out, Elon McCollum. In any case, they built those out and they claimed anywhere from one MOA to less accuracy. Ask any soldier out in the field, you're not getting that type of accuracy because as someone put it so eloquently on Instagram, uh, you tighten the wrong, wrong screw and you go from a 1 MOA gun to a 4 MOA gun. It is definitely a finicky system. The M14 in general, uh, when you try to accurize it, becomes a just a finicky system. So this particular guy right here has been kind of worked over by Fulton and we hold with good ammo anywhere from 1 to 2 MOA. But to be clear, if I were to take this out, clean it in any way or, you know, screw in a screw wrong, uh, I'm losing a lot of that wonderful accuracy I'm getting out of it. To be clear, you have to understand that prior to the, you know, the wonderful nature of the SR-25 and the M110 and all these awesome you know, 308 gas guns that we have nowadays um, is a little bit more kind of dicey when you were trying to get something super accurate. But that is a lot of talk about boring history. You guys are here to learn about how is this thing actually put together? What is everything on this rifle and how does it shoot? So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna start at the very tip as we always do because we always go what, Micah? Tip to bite just like what likes. The Navy and the Army and the Marines and especially Air Force JTACs. <laughs> Fair enough. So the Mark 14 Mod Zero, adopted by the United States Navy Special Warfare, adopted by AFSPEC War. And in fact, there's a really famous photo of a pair rescue men uh, rocking one of these. So they were certainly, they certainly saw a lot of service. In any case, with ours, we do have a surefire three prong in the end. You have to understand that these were made by Smith originally, and they had their own muzzle device, their own suppressor, and you didn't specifically see that suppressor uh, out in the field that much. That was the wind talker suppressor. I, I can't even get one because I don't even know if there's one in the civilian market. Good movie. Really good movie, actually. <laughs> But uh, we don't have one. But in any case, if we wanted to suppress the Mark 14 EBR, we have a Surefire suppressor. And to go along with that, we of course have the adapter, and then we have this adjustable gas plug. In any case, the adjustable gas plug is probably the best thing that could have happened to the M14, because with a suppressor on there, unless you're adjusting the gas system, um, you're putting a lot of stress on the operating rod on the system. Ours is tuned to work with the suppressor. Um, 
it works pretty well. Uh, it is an M14, so as it dirties up a little bit faster, you, you do tend to get a little bit of problems. It's not um, like all these wonderful weapons like the LMT and stuff, but it works pretty well. But the M14 uh, Mod Zero, I think, is made to, to have the suppressor on it because it looks so, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, Mike? Sex, sexy. Oh, different word. Sexy. <laughs> sexy. <laughs> In any case, it looks great. Now, with the Mark 14 Mod Zero, we do have a cut down barrel. This is an 18 inch barrel, and that was to make the system a little bit more compact. Compare that to the EBR RI, which is from the Army. They did have the full 22 inch barrel because length matters. Sometimes. I'm sure, he's, I'm sure this one has a great personality. Everybody does shit on the gas system. Um, they say it's so terrible. The M14 is a finicky rifle, and it's certainly not the most uh, reliable rifle nowadays. However, we have to understand that the M14 was an improvement over the M1 Grand. So in all cases, it is a fairly good system as far as uh, being based off of the Grand. It's like, you know, the M1 Grand fought in the war and then it had its son. Um, you know, the son didn't do so hot, did a lot of coke, um, but kind of pulled it together, kind of. But he's way cooler. He's way cooler. He was way cooler than the dad, like we see right now. But he certainly did a lot of coke, so that kind of affected him a little bit. Uh, moving down from there, we do get into the Sage chassis. It is all aluminum. That being said, uh, that sounds lightweight. This is anything but a lightweight rifle. So this is about 14 pounds unloaded. Uh, closer to 17 once you have a loaded magazine in there and obviously when you start throwing optics on there you're getting a fairly heavy boy now the nice part about that is that it ends up being a, a really gentle shooter because all that weight's going to absorb um, all of that recoil coming back so it actually doesn't recoil much at all compared to a lot of 308 guns especially a 308 that is 18 inches on the barrel but as you can see we do have picatinny on all sides on this guy and then of course we have this molded handguard piece right here that is kydex now this is a very sturdy stable platform as long as you screw down all the screws make sure that they're very tight otherwise you're going to screw your accuracy but in any case if you were to put a laser on this it's going to be it's going to stay zero this is a very sturdy platform the ebrs typically came with some type of harris bipod which of course because it served for so long it is clearly the best bipod hashtag it's not but uh they worked really well on the ebr and as we move back from that, we do, of course, get to what we have back here. And this is where it gets really interesting on the EBR. Now, once we get from these forward rails right here, we have a couple of things. We do have a sling attachment point right here. This isn't the correct way to use it. It works, uh, typically a hook of some type, and then you tape it to make sure it doesn't make too much noise. And then, of course, we have this very vibey part. I think this is the biggest vibe when it comes to the Mark 14, the, the handguard right here, because it just looks so damn good. I just... Mm. Mm. It just looks good. And to be clear, it is actually fairly comfortable to hold. Um, even using, you know, the retarded thumb over bore techniques, it does, it just feels good. It, it is a good feeling gun, although it is certainly not the most optimized weapon out there. Moving back from there, we do, of course, have where it connects into the main part of the receiver right there. Now, there are a lot of things done that actually have helped with accuracy on the M14. Uh, we, we are free floating the barrel. There's an op rod guide that was added from Sage International. And then it apparently gets it to a point where it's supposed to be like glass bedding an M14. Um, if you know anything about accurizing an M14, it's a real bitch. And this is supposed to kind of take a lot of the thought process out of it. Again, so long as you don't take it apart in the field, you're gonna have a fairly accurate weapon. Now, there is a scope mount that does come directly from Sage. However, they are super rare and we do not have one. This is just a Sadlac. Um, it works extremely well, no complaints there, but the uh, I wish we would have the cantilevered uh, Sage because it, it connects into the rail and it just looks, what's the word, cool? Looks cool, looks good. This is not the right hand motion, it's gabagoo. This weapon does feed from a 20 round magazine. You'll see a lot of guys running the 25 rounders because they tend to uh, work fairly well. They're just a little bit longer, obviously. Um, I've really had no problems. I mostly run the Checkmate Industries ones and those work absolutely fine. For once, the government contract magazines are working well. Incredible. Now, originally when the Mark 14 EBR was designed, it was designed so that uh, with a scope mounted, you could look through the iron sights and see it. And that's true of this one as well. Even with the Sadlac right there, you do have that dip and that groove in the center so that you can see the iron sights if your optic were to go down. It's not co-witnessing, but 
damn it, it works. I think the coolest part on the Sage EBR is that you do have last round bolt hole to open. And on the EBR, they added the bolt release on the side, just like an M4. So once you load it in, you can simply hit that bolt release. Our particular one broke and ours is replaced with a normal one, unfortunately, but it is a cool feature that the Sage EBR has. And it just makes the manual of arms just that much better. Of course, right here, we do have our pistol grip, much needed, I have no complaints about it. And then probably the vibiest part of the Mark 14 Mod Zero is going to be the telescoping stock. So this guy is a monstrosity, it is heavy, there's a lot of adjustments, but you know what? It is super duper cool. So what's nice is that this actually makes the M14 a much better system to fire because it puts that recoil right in line with your shoulder. So I'm able to get much more on top of the gun versus the older stocks that you had on the M14 where you're under the action. So you end up being able to, along with the weight, control the recoil a lot better on the Mark 14 Mod Zero. This is not me calling this a good gun. It's just merely pointing out that the stock design did a lot more for this entire system than the handguard did. So I have a lot of good things to say. Of course, we have an adjustable cheek piece depending on the height of your optic. And it should be noted that the optics that were typically run on the Mark 14 Mod Zeros was anything from like an EOTech. Um, we have a more modern EOTech right here. And then of course, some type of variable optic, whether it be a 1.5 to five or some variation between there or some larger magnification optic. Again, you have to understand the role that the Mark 14 Mod Zero falls into. At most, this weapon was meant to fill a DMR role. Typically, a DMR is firing out to around six, maybe 800 on a really good day. The Mark 14 Mod Zero or the Mark 14 EBR RI are more than capable of making shots at that distance, even with a you know, three to four MOA gun, although that's much more difficult. Um, they are capable weapons of their own right. When you kind of look back at the whole of the package on the Mark 14 Mod Zero, it is without a doubt the coolest looking gun that it, it probably has ever been made. However, after shooting one, after holding one, you'll probably agree that it is not the most practical, unfortunately. So as much of a joy as it has been to shoot this and to spend a lot of time on this, it just really isn't it. You know, overall, I love EBR. Are you just saying that because EBR is in the room? I love EBR. It's obviously not at all uh, a wonderful combat weapon in my opinion. You hear some people who are really wax poetic about this, about how great it was in combat, and I'm sure it has performed well. Uh, from the moment it was designed, that you know the inception of the Mark 14 happened, it was an outclass weapon by many of the weapon systems that were already being produced. It was a good stopgap when it comes to the M14 uh, EBR RI that worked. The Mod Zero was, I mean, nav spec war is gonna nav spec war. You guys are always making cool shit. So I get it. it, it if there's one thing I can say about the EBR that that worked more than anything, is it probably bought, it probably brought a shit ton of people into the gun world because of how fucking cool this looked, without a doubt. If you're not a gun guy and you show this one, they'd be like, oh sick, the M14, they'd know. You know what guys, maybe the real M14 EBR was the friends we made along the way. With that being said, let's go shoot some long range at this guy because it is very capable of it. All right. You're good. All right, so we are taking shots. We're at uh, <clears throat> 700 from the target and 710 from the second one. And uh, we'll take a few shots and uh, we're using military M80 ball. And is the M14 capable of it? Probably. With gold medal match from Norma, we were getting about one to two MOA uh, when the barrel was cold about 1.2. Let's give this a shot. All right, right. Two in a row. Come on, EBR, you can do it. <laughs> nope. Good not. Maybe it was me. Not too bad, right? 